Augmented reality is an interesting beast. It allows us to take real world video footage and overlay digital actors within that scene. And these things can be tracked in a three dimensional space, manipulated and even interacted with depending on what you use. The most important thing to note about augmented reality is that we need an object or a physical location that is going to ground our augmented reality experience. For us, we're gonna utilize the Merge Cube, and that allows us to represent our augmented reality experience with a six-sided cube, with every side representing something different, or even attaching objects to roughly the location of the cube. So when it's rotated and manipulated, those objects will follow in suit. So in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how to utilize the Merge Cube and build an augmented reality scene in CoSpaces. Okay guys, so in this part of the video, we're gonna jump into CoSpaces and learn how to work with the Merge Cube and putting elements all around that cube. So the first thing we're gonna to have to do is go to cospaces.io. You're gonna to have to hit the login button and you're gonna log in with your education email. However, if you have not yet signed up to the class on CoSpaces, you have to go sign in with the login code then you have to click on this tiny link, sign up with a five character class code, put in the code that is on our Google Classroom. And then when you've done all of that, you go back and you sign in with your Gmail, making sure you hit the education one. And just like that, we're in. So let's start off by heading to our class and clicking on Merge Cube Practice and starting with that activity. Now, because I'm the teacher, I can't just click on that because it will show me your projects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to CoSpaces, Create, Merge Cube, and I'm just going to do an empty scene because all these other ones have got so much junk within them. And straight away, we are presented with the cube that I showed you earlier in the video. Now. If I left click, I can drag around the environment and look at all the faces of the cube, except for the bottom, which we'll get at later on. You can hold space bar and left click to pan around your environment and you can scroll to zoom in and out. Now there's two things I like to do straight off the bat when I'm looking at the Merge Cube project. The first one is I like to turn snapping on and you'll see why very, very soon. And the second thing I like to do is turn the face labels on with the Merge Cube. So if you right click on your Merge Cube, you can go show side labels and this just lets you orientate yourself around the cube to see which is top left right all that kind of stuff so you can see it's a little bit backwards there's the right and there's the left for some reason but that's just how it's set up in cospaces now realistically we should start off by naming our project so i've just clicked on that little button there we've gone to cospace one and let's call this merge cube practice because that's what yours is called and we'll talk about scenes maybe later on, but not for today. So what I wanna do is I wanna start off by modifying my cube because I'm not a huge fan of the black and gray. I know it's how the Merge Cube looks, but this is not how I want it to look when I put my augmented reality experience around it. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is right clicking on the cube and I'm gonna go up to material and then I can start playing around with the texture and the color. Now it's worth noting that you have to have a texture and you're allowed to change the color. Now, what I mean by that is if I go for this, let's say, roof tiley sort of texture, I suppose, or fish scale maybe, if I then go to color, this doesn't replace the texture, it simply recolors it, okay? So you sort of have to pick a texture that suits what you're going for. There are some fairly bland ones, as you can tell, and then you gotta pick a color that sort of suits that theme as well, okay? So that's a little bit of customization you can do with the cube. The other thing you can do is go to the inside of the cube. So if I right click and go view inside, I'm now seeing the, obviously the inside of that cube, just like I did for my little scene at the beginning of the video. I actually modeled most things inside the cube and then a few things on the outside. So it's up to you how you want to use this. It's completely customizable, so your call. All right, I'm gonna go back to the outside for the moment. And we're going to construct our scene by using the built-in library. Before we do anything, I want you to pick a theme. I want you to pick some kind of aspect that you can use for your cube. For me, I'm going to choose animals for this one, just as a little practice thing. Don't just go nuts and go random with stupid, crazy, fiery babies like we did the first time. Try and be consistent with this one. So I'm going to head to the library 
and I'm going to go straight to animals and I'm going to grab my favorite one, the puppy dog. And you'll notice that because I turned the snapping on, this is why I did it, the dog will snap A to the face of the cube and B, he'll snap to a grid on the cube, which I love. Now, as with um, coast bases, sorry, I was about to say merge cube. With coast bases, we have all the modification things here. If you want to move him up and down, there's your up and down. There's your scale if you want to make him bigger or smaller. There's your rotation tool. And again, I like the snapping because it snaps the rotation to intervals. And finally, your transform tool to move things around. Okay, or you can just click and drag. Alrighty, so let's give him a little bit of a world to stand on. This is quite boring. So I'm going to head to nature. I'm going to chuck in some plants. Yeah, we'll chuck in a bit of grass. We'll rotate that around. Copy and paste it. Rotate it a bit more. Paste again. Whoopsie doodle. Okay, and we'll scale it up a little bit so they don't look exactly the same. Oh, look at it. It's amazing. Fantastic. Oh, it just took away my rotation. Whatever. Chuck in a bit of grass so he can do his whizzes in there. And lastly, let's chuck in a tree. That's a big tree. All right, down you go. All righty. So we've roughly got a scene. I would like, however, to have some grass for him to stand on rather than this weird brown checkerboardy sort of thing going on here. So what I'm going to do is I am simply going to go to the special tab down here. Is it special? No, it's building. I tell a lie. And I'm just going to grab this little fella right here because he is a flat plane. And I love it. So I'll chuck him roughly in the middle. Use these to sort of get him in the right spot. Scale it right up. Come on. Yeah, a bit more. Okay, and I need to move him a little bit more, do I? Oh, look, the snapping's failing me. It's all right. Oh, is it all right? No, it's not all right. I don't like it. So let's quickly turn the snapping off. Scale it. Move him slightly. All right, I'd spend a lot more time on that, I think, if I did that personally. But I'll turn the snapping back on. Wow. Okay, so let's give this guy a little bit of color here. We'll right-click on him, go to Material, and make him nice and green. So look, he's got a patch of grass to stand. I'm going to fix that up later on. That's going to annoy me. Whatever. So there's the basics of building your world when it comes to Merge Cube. Now, the interesting thing, when you want to start working on your next side, you might be really tempted to start dragging things on the side, rotating them and trying to put them into place. But I love this feature. It literally will snap the objects to that side, orient them correctly, all that kind of stuff. You will have to rotate them around, but that's not a big problem considering. Okay, so building all the sides is not a difficult process. It's just a matter of putting them in the right place. Pick a theme for every single one of your sides. Okay, but other than that, I suggest you pause the video and have a go because the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at sharing and publishing our Merge Cube here so other people can view it. So for right now, pause the video, go and have a go at building yourself a rough cube with a bit of a theme going to it. Uh, and then I'm going to share. I'm going to do a little bit myself. All right, so for the sake of time, I'm going to keep going. But you can see I've built second side here I've tried to create you know a bit of a water hole with some flowers around it for our kitty cat and our bunny rabbit but yeah just something really basic now a couple of things I want to quickly show before I move on to the sharing process one thing is if you're finding it like I did when you try and move an object you might accidentally grab the bottom and shove it somewhere else you can right click on objects in co-spaces and lock them into place so you can't accidentally grab it and then move it around. So once something is in place, feel free to lock it in. Okay, so one other thing I want to quickly show you is the idea that you don't have to have every single object attached to the cube for this to work properly. In fact, you can put stuff floating in the sky. So let's grab our good old friend, you know what, not the ship. We'll do something a bit more logical. Let's go the plane, a little bit smaller. And we can actually put this floating above our scene. And the really cool thing, because Merge Cube is just used as sort of a grounding device, something to orient the augmented experience, this plane will be floating above the cube no matter what. And as we rotate the cube around, the plane will stay relative in that position. So that's just something to note. Not everything has to be attached to the cube as it were. So, all right, there we go. There's all the basics of building a Merge Cube scene in Coast Bases. 
The next thing to do is actually share it with other people. And there's a multitude of ways to do that. As you can probably imagine, there's our big fat share button. So we're gonna start here. And the first thing we have to do is make this thing public. And there's two ways. You can make it an unlisted, or you can put it on a public gallery for everyone to look at. I would consider publishing these things to the gallery, to be honest. I'm not going to because mine's unfinished. So I'm gonna go share unlisted for now. And it's gonna go, what's the name? What's the description? Things like that. So let's call this Animal Park. Merge cube test with animals. Perfect. Okay, we'll leave it as share unlisted. We'll hit the button. And it's gonna take us to essentially the published page in a few seconds. And then we're gonna click on one more button. We're gonna click on this little button here, the share with the link on it. Now, when I click on that, we get a multitude of options. Obviously, we've got these social medias that we can use at the top here, but the ones I prefer to use are down below. We've got the QR codes. So for you guys, when we make our posters, you're gonna download your QR code. You're gonna shove it onto your poster. Come over here, you. You're gonna plop that onto your poster alongside your description and a picture. So people can just walk around with a merge cube and a phone, take a snapshot of your QR code, and then view your project on a merge cube, okay? The alternatives are, obviously, if you would like anybody in the class to have a go and give you some feedback, go and write your share code on the board and people can just jam that into Cospaces and have a look. Alternatively, you can email people this link here. It's almost the same as the share code. This one's pretty fun. If you've got a Google site or even a website you make and you would like to embed your merge queue project, you can copy this what's called iframe code shove it into a website and you've got your merge cube embedded in the middle of a web page. So yeah, that's pretty neat. But that's the basics of sharing your merge cube scene with other people. There's one very last thing I would like to note before I go, however. Let's say I'll duplicate Mr. Plane. Whoa, that went a bit nutty. All right, and I've made a bunch of other changes and I want somebody else to try it out, so I give them a code and I notice that the second plane and all the changes I made are not there. Well, that's because every time you make any changes after you've generated, say, a QR code or a share link, you've actually got to go back to share and you've got to hit this update button. So anytime you would like to share the new version, make sure you go to share, make sure you click that update button. Okay, and that's it. That's the entirety of the video, guys. So in the next one, we're going to jump into the coding section of Coblox just to try out some different stuff. So I'll catch you then.